Okay, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for coming by. It's Chris Petrie. We're going to have some fun. We're going to do some watercolors. We're going to just do some improv today. You know I love to do improv. So let's uh, get started here. We're going to make some notes first. Okay, now the basic, the basic idea we have here is we're going to actually, we're going to key in on two key um, aspects of watercolor. One would be te texture, and then two, tonal value. Both great um, building blocks of watercolor. And we can make a real exciting painting um, by just using texture and tonal value as like our two, let's say, main building blocks um, for this for this painting. Um, I'm gonna just try to create a. Um, I'm gonna try to create a, a nice. Roof. And uh, this will be the side of a house with a couple windows, maybe. So we'll put a window over here, maybe. And I'm improving, of course. I'm just going to try to. Another window up here. And another window there. That should be good. So we're going to put lots of texture in our, our the side of our house here. And we're going to keep it real simple. This will be a plaster, a plaster type house. So it's going to be like a white plaster with a little bit of interesting uh, mossy type feel. Maybe some, there's a little bit of tiny bit of moss on the side of the plaster and there's some spots that are faded a little and some just natural occurring happenings going on there. This might be an older house. It's a nice country house here and um, we have a porch for the front and the front of the house would be around this side so we're actually looking through the front porch area and then we're gonna have some interesting darker shapes over here some dark pine trees and Things like that. And some interesting tree shapes over here. Okay, so that's kind of the simple idea of it. And this is going to be dark over here. We're going to have these dark pine trees like that. And this is going to be fun. Nothing too serious here. We're doing a composition for practicing our two building blocks important building blocks of watercolor. We're going to leave some light showing through in our dark areas where our trees are over here. That makes it look interesting. And that's that's really the ba you know the basics of it. And we'll we'll make some more details on the windows. We'll do that when we do our drawing, our pencil drawing. But that's going to be the idea of our of our watercolor exercise and painting. Uh, <clears throat> tonal value is the the light plaster color, which is going to be like a whitish color with some different colors mixed in, 
and then our really dark tonal value over here, which is going to be the uh, dark greens and bluish greens and some browns mixed in there, some real nice darks right over there on this side of the, the house. And then maybe some darker bushes over here. So That'll give us a nice feel of distance too as we do our composition, three-dimensionality. And uh, okay, so that's the idea. So I kind of work out my ideas. I'm just improving here. I improvise my idea on here. I might have seen this in a similar something similar in a watercolor workbook, or I might have seen a picture online I like, or uh, I might be looking out my window and I see a house across the way from me and it looks interesting, so I'm going to do a little sketch. And then I come up with this, which is just a basic format of what I want to do. And then we're just going to key in on these two ideas of texture, which will be the plaster wall with lots of nice texture and tonal value which will be the light of the plaster wall and house, the side of the house here, and then the dark, beautiful darks of the greens, the trees over here on the side of the house. Let's get into it, it's exciting. It's gonna look really good. Now I have I have um, rough watercolor paper. This is uh, Fabriano rough rough paper. Really good paper. I some, most times I practice with actually just the inexpensive paper, like a Fabriano uh, student grade paper, or um, sometimes I'll find things in the art store on sale. And then when I'm going to do a really good painting, where it's like going to be a it's going to be a finished painting, or maybe I'll want to save it for maybe if I have a show somewhere, I can have a couple paintings stockpiled and I use the really best of the best paper for that. And so this is the best of the best paper I have. And let's start out here. We're gonna go back and remember this is what we're working from. We're working from this here. I'm gonna set this across. And I remember that it starts about halfway, the, where the angle comes down is about halfway. You can make little marks on your paper, or on your tape, I should say. I, ta I taped around my paper here. You can make marks with some magic marker or pencil, just to kind of give yourself some hash marks when you're, you're constructing your, your uh, composition. So I know that my roof uh, starts to um, angle downward here where the trees start over here. So this will be my first hash mark I make there. Then I notice that the porch and the side of the house where it ends up is about here. Now these hash marks are just kind of the little small indicators or guides for me so that as I start to do my drawing I can kind of already have some things, you know, planned out a little. Now we're going to say that the roof is, the uh, small shed roof, where the front porch is, is about, it's about here. And the top of the roof is about here. And then we could say, um, porch, roof, And this is a house on the side. And this is a roof up here. So you can make little notes too. And I would say let's go really light first with our pencil drawing. So we can always maybe erase a little bit and if we have to just to readjust things. But we kind of know. And one more line. Let's make one more line. The house is here. So if we transfer that, if we kind of say, okay, that's the edge of the house. So here, if this is the edge of the house, then we can just transfer that mark up top here a little bit. And we said this was the edge where the roof starts. And then this over here was... So that's all I'm doing is really... You can do it on here first. You can actually do it on your preliminary uh, drawing first, like this. Make your hash marks here. And you might say here's the windows.
and then maybe here's the windows, same, same line as that too. Windows and roof. So yeah, you can make as many notes as you, you feel you have to, or you might not need any notes at all. It depends on uh, how you want to approach your, your layout of your drawing, but I like to make some notes here and there, so I'm going to do that. And I made some, there's some, this won't bother me too much. There is some of the, yeah, the only, that's the only thing we have to be careful when we work with, when we work with um, printer paper. It does, it, it leaks through if I'm using a Sharpie a lot of times. So I did notice that my watercolor paper has a little bit of Sharpie, but that, that doesn't bother me too much here. We're just, we're doing an exercise. Okay, so let's start here. And then we're gonna come down with our roof and look at, okay. Perfect. And then we're going to go in a little bit. And then we're going to come down. I'll make a little bit of an angle on that. And there's the porch, like that. And then the porch roof is here. And then there's the post. Like that. And the first window's here. I'm just drawing a simple rectangle. If you want, you can always, you can do a, a ruler and just get a more of an accurate rectangle like that if you want. Then there's a window above it and it's just a little bit below the, the roof line. And there's another window over here. We can continue to use the ruler here. We'll get a halfway point on our windows. And that should be good, just a halfway point. And the rest we can do by hand. Now that we know we have our halfway point, we're gonna do um, just three lines across. One, two, and three. So three, three uh, sections. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Like that and then divide those in half each, like that. And that's our windows, simple as that. There's our windows. Then we can go around with some trim. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can use the ruler if you want. I'm just gonna do it by hand. Lightly drawing it, and there you go. Some trim around the windows. And then we can just make a little couple indications with our pencil marks, knowing that we're gonna make some cracks in the plaster on this cement plaster wall. And uh, we'll give it some texture. And then also we know that usually on windows, windows will have a little bit of shading under the undersides of the uh, top of the window here and also usually under the center of the window where the sash is over here it usually has some shadowing under there so we could just kind of put some indications of some shadow there so we remember we remember when we're painting that's all and that should be good and a lot of times windows are going to reflect what's around them. So if the trees are over here, maybe there's some darker shadows over here. On the windows, on the glass of the windows where the trees are. They're darker over here maybe.
perfect. We'll draw the trim on the roof here, where the trim is on this top here, this top piece. Okay, we're ready to paint. Pour some water, fresh clean water, so I have a large uh, collapsible container. And we'll use a round brush, maybe we'll use a square brush this um, time. We'll use a square brush maybe to do some details on the windows. I might need a smaller square brush than this. I'll have to look around, see if I have one. And I think I have another square brush about this size. That might work to do some of the window panes. All right. I'm going to say let's start with the darks first. All right, sap green, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Maybe a little cobalt blue. We're going to make this really interesting, this green here. Nice and dark. Maybe some... All right, now the fun part is making these trees up here, the branches. Um, I think with this we could just really have a free, carefree attitude toward these, these trees up here. Dry off the brush a little bit maybe, and just sort of move the brush around. You know, sometimes maybe upwards, like that. Just like that, perfect. Leave spaces there. Then as we, as we get lower here, over by the side of the house, then we're going to start getting into some of the um, tree trunks. I'll just start a few. Then we'll change our colors a little bit. We'll use some more of the burnt umber over here. And some of the burnt sienna, burnt umber, a little bit of uh, cerulean blue. And we'll do some of the trunks of the trees over here. So these are a little bit wider. That's all. The, the, you know, at the bottom of the tree trunks, they're a little wider. If you have to dr dry off the brush a little bit. Uh, I'm going to... <clears throat> I'm going to get... Uh, I'm going to use my needle point brush as well. So we have um, our round brush we were just using, of course. A round brush, then a needle point brush we're going to use now. And we'll also work with a little bit of a square brush. Small, really, really small square brush. This is a number two. So let's move into this. This is going to give us more of these finer branches we, we're going to have over here. And remember, we were from our drawing. We're going to keep. We're going to have a little bit of a, um, a field, a field across this front area here. That's going to be really important. This is going to give us that real nice three-dimensional look in, in this painting. So we're going to leave this area like a field here, like of grass and maybe some snow. Let's 
let's do that. Make sure we leave that open. So we'll say this is about where the field ends over here. And we'll make some bushes over there too, maybe. We're going to make it mysterious over here. Mysterious woods over here. Lots of branches and leaves and things. And there we have it. Okay. Now we can go back and we'll get our round brush again and we'll go back in again and get some more of those greens with the blues mixed in there. And Already we're seeing some really good um, effects here. We're getting that nice distance feeling. A little bit of the blue, cerulean blue, mixed in with some of that brown. Maybe a little bit of sap green too. And there's some bushes over here, so we'll put those over here and we'll make sure we don't go over that post there. So that's our post, we want to leave that. If you happen to go over that, you can touch that up a little bit later with some white, titanium white will do that. I went a little bit over that post there, that white post. So we'll, we'll use some white paint, some white titanium white, and just touch that up a little. But you can see we're really starting, it's starting to shape up and look really good. Um, I'm just adding a few little more darks up here, but you can see that's really very effective to get that tonal value. Very powerful. The darks of the trees here. And I just mix up some more green and blue. Perfect. Okay, now let's do the same thing. We already have our, our blue and green mixture mixed here. And a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of burnt sienna and olive green. Here, let's switch brushes. To get these window panes, let's use a smaller brush. Let's do this. And we'll try to just leave some white space between each, like that. And here's where you don't, let's not, let's not get too fussy uh, over here on these windows. I mean, we want to do them good, but we don't want to go too much. That, that's good. Once we're done with the, I mean, you could take your time more if you want. But once the whole painting's completed, uh, we're not going to be focusing to, in too much on those windows, you know, in, in a sense, like we're not going to really be too concerned. We're just looking to, and again, we're leaving some window panes open. We'll put some blue in there for the blue sky. So the windows are just going to reflect the trees that are in front of it. So if you could imagine, if we were on location painting this, the trees would be behind us also. So they're back over here, and the same style trees are right behind us. And since those are right behind us, we're going to see those reflecting in the glass on the window panes. So that's all that is, just a little tidbit of information that we're trying to use there. And then we'll make some sky color, cobalt blue. And 
And since we're over here, might as well just uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of yellow ochre too, and some cerulean blue. We'll We'll also get some, we'll put some really interesting purple color in there, just here and there. Always a great color to use. It's like a shadow feeling sometimes and it's got a pleasant feel, feeling to it. I think if we just try to change these colors on the window panes, we're really in good good shape. All right, we have it. Let's get some greens here. Sap green, olive green. A little bit of the blue mix there. So we're not, I would say we're, we have, it's not snow over here. Let's keep this a kind of grass feel. And then we'll introduce some cadmium lemon yellow. Maybe a little cadmium yellow lemon, or just, just cadmium yellow, I should say. Maybe some. Yellow ochre too, mixed in there. Maybe some raw umber. And then we, we said we're going to touch up this post a little bit with um, some titanium white. So there we have a lot of excitement going on right in this section over here on the right side of the painting. I think that's important. Um, I might do a little bit of uh, shadow under here, across here, just to make that uh, shed roof that's over the top of the porch area stand out a little bit. And now we're going to work into our uh, lighter tonal values. So here we have a little shadowing on the porch area. And again, we said this is plaster over here on this. All this, all these walls over here are plaster. So let's um, let's get into that. Before we do that, let's. Clean up our palette a little bit. And again, thanks everyone for stopping by and 
coming along here on the journey, our watercolor journey together. Uh, if, if you are new and you haven't subscribed, uh, consider subscribing. We're, we're, we do this every weekend, once a week. Once a week we're together and we do our painting, drawing and painting in watercolor. And uh, if you like this video, you can thumbs up and then I know it's something that everyone likes and I'll do more like these in the future. So now we just... Okay, and we're continuing on here. We're splashing. Don't worry if the splashing goes on your windows a little bit. No big deal. Um, if it splashes over here on our um, where our trees are, not a big deal. Maybe I'll put some blue in the white spots a little bit here and there. For the feeling of sky color. So I'm just adding a little blue. There, like that. Perfect. Okay, again, um, purple, yellow, yellow ochre, mineral violet is our purple color. We have that. And then we'll just start going around our windows. Use your brush in all different directions. So this direction, maybe go this way a little bit. Maybe tap on the paper a little bit with your brush like that. Um, let's do some blue, mix in some blue there. The key is to, we could use our finger painting here. The thing is to remember, let's try to have lots of variation, but light, go super light on this area. And we're gonna pretend that the light is splashing across this wall. Now let's go with some raw umber. Purple. A little bit of that grayish color that we mixed up. We want to definitely repeat that. So that grayish mixture we mixed up here, which was uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and a little bit of sap green. That's gonna be a nice effect on this wall because it's sort of like picking up the colors of the trees around this house that are all around the house everywhere. So that actually will reflect onto the plaster walls, which are white. And then we do that. And then we go back and use some more purple and yellow. Again, light, super light. The reason I say super light is we can always go over with another light uh, coat of, you know, another glazing on top of this. So as we paint this light wall here, this plaster wall, hey, we can go over again. We just don't want to go too dark. And that'll ruin the effect of the nice light color of the painting. The light and the tonal values that we talked about, we want to have a a really good uh, tonal value effect here. I do some more splashing. Maybe a little bit of uh, the uh, cadmium lemon yellow and yellow ochre. Tie everything together with the same repeating colors throughout the painting. And that's what we'll do here. We'll actually let this dry and we'll, we'll do another little bit of touch-ups on the uh, plaster.
Okay, looking really good. All right, let's... And a couple light little... On the windows, just a little bit of color on the, the window panes. Not too much though, super light. Not much water at all. And we'll do a little bit of blow drying. This is fantastic. A little bit of blow drying with the blow dryer and now we're really, we can finish up and do a nice job on the final details here. And um, that's always a good thing to remember, like let your stuff, your let your um, paintings dry when you can between glazings. Like um, with this part here, we used a lot of lighter colors with more water. So this area was pretty wet as we did the side of the house, the plaster. So just recall that, um, that you know, you would take a 15 or 20 minute break or so if you didn't want to bother using a blow dryer or if you wanted to do some of this one day and then the next day you come back and you let this area all dry. So if you want to do, do the darks one day here. So if we do the darks here one day and then we come back and we'll do, we could do the other uh, sections of this painting the second day and then we could let it dry again and the third day come back and do the final de details that we're going to do now. Obviously I, I have to make my video all at one time so that's why I do it all at one time but if I wasn't under any pressure to get the video done I would maybe do this in two or three days or maybe break it up and do once you know maybe start it in the morning drawing it and sketching it and then in the afternoon work on uh, some of the painting maybe the darks and then um, once I have the darks done then I can uh, maybe in the evening come back and do the lighter tonal values on the plaster here, doing the splashing and the, you know, lighter tonal values. And then maybe it, uh, later on or the, ne or the next day, come back and do the final touches, which we're going to do now. Um, we'll just use the round brush for this part, I think. That should be plenty to... So we'll, we're going to use our same colors again. We'll use mineral violet some blue, some yellow ochre. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll notice that that's the shadows, the shadows are going to actually occur under the trim, like on these sections here. So that is a natural, naturally occurring shadow underneath the trim, which protrudes from the plaster outwards that wraps around the windows. So I'll just put in a nice little shadow there and we'll mix again and then here the same thing the trim along this roof is going to have a shadow natural occurring shadow cast shadow and I'll mix up the color variation on this I don't want it to be all one color. And then I could even get it darker, use a little more, maybe some French ultramarine, maybe I'll mix up here a little bit of French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, again, reoccur, re you know, the same repeating colors that we mixed before, a little bit of green, blue, burnt umber, sap green, dry off on the uh, tissue, dry off the, and then we can do the, maybe just a couple little, A little bit of hit and miss. That look always is good. And there's
there's some more shadowing that's going to occur under there like that. And the same there, so you can go across those, that area there. And then again, we can add a little bit of color around the windows, just to, a couple splashes, just to make them a little more interesting. And that's just the plaster look. And and again, I'm just uh, going around the windows just so that we have a little more interesting uh, things going on and some splashing some areas we leave without any, uh, that's maybe, you know, there's some light here and there, there's some shadowing here and there. We're pretending that the trees behind us, if we're standing in this scene looking at this house and we're pretending there's trees behind us, then we're thinking that there's going to be, um, that, you know, shadowing and things, and that's what we're going to see on the wall. And I think that's it. That's pretty much a good effect we have. with everything and maybe I'll do a little bit of shadowing under here where the side is over here just to give that a little more interesting look and then like we said we're going to try to just um, make sure we remember that we have our titanium white paint that we can use to touch up occasionally if we find that we've gone over a, a line or something. And then I'll just do that. And this way we have a... And we can also do a couple And that looks good. All right, thanks again for coming by. We will see you on the next video. I hope you enjoy this, please. Uh, if you do like this video, thumbs up this way I know. I'll do more like this where we're doing more techniques and um, kind of doing more exercises versus trying to do a full you know, um, painting. We're just doing a section, a smaller section of a painting. Uh, we had fun and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.